Hey, welcome to the Moral News for the seven days ending on May 12, 2023. We're going to lead off today with a item on the resolve from the from the three years here now after the, the so-called pandemic. And uh, we have some polling results about things from George Parna. Listen in. The U.S. government's COVID-19 public health emergency officially ends May 11th. And now, more than three years after the pandemic began, we're starting to realize how the emergency had an impact on American society. So how has it affected us spiritually? A new poll finds 20% fewer American adults believe that they have a unique God-given calling or purpose in their life. The Cultural Research Center at Arizona Christian University study reveals before the pandemic, 66% embrace that view. Today, it's down to less than half of adults, 46%. Well, here with more is pollster George Barna. George, it's always a pleasure talking with you, and this latest finding is troubling. You'd think with so many people locked down and shut in early on in this pandemic that they would have had more time uh, praying, seeking God's purpose for their lives, but this seems like many people are just kind of giving up hope and direction. Is it because authorities shut down their churches? What's the reason? Well, you know, Gary, when we look at, at spirituality in America, one of the things that I've discovered over more than 40 years of studying this is that people's beliefs and religious behavior doesn't really change very much very often. And so the dramatic changes that we've seen during this short three-year period of time are indicative of the fact that really the pandemic was a crisis. That's when people's beliefs change, when they're trying to figure out, maybe I was wrong, how do things work? Who am I? How does life work better than what I'm experiencing now? And so it's really the only time that we see significant or dramatic spiritual change. And I think what's happened is that a lot of people have gone back and questioned some of the beliefs that they held at the start of the pandemic. Their entire life was thrown into confusion by all the government lockdowns and other you know, significant changes that were forced upon them. And there were a lot of other personal crises, whether they were health crises, financial issues that arose, family drama that came out of all of this, all kinds of things that really created pain in people's lives. That's when we change, when we're in pain. I think a lot of people were pretty surprised during the so-called pandemic. They uh, they didn't realize then that, that, that their own churches that the government, uh, the corporations, uh, that basically nobody was on their side because everything is exploitative today. Everything is about, you know, shearing the sheep. So, yeah, so they lost a lot of hope, they lost a lot of hope in, in God because they were trusting in a lot of these corrupted institutions rather than in God himself and in his word. So uh, not not trying to fault them for it. It's just, but I think that's part of what's happened. Now, watch this section here. There's an interesting piece here about the sacredness of life. We found that people were 10 percentage points less likely after the pandemic to say that human life is sacred. It went from an already low 39 percent to an even lower 29 percent. So this is one of those things where, again, people are trying to redefine things to make sense of life. And one of the things that I think many people are concluding after the pandemic is, you know, life can't be sacred. And look at what happened during the co uh, course of the pandemic. I thought this is one of the most interesting bits because it reminds us that uh, all this great disappointment led a lot of people to feel that uh, life wasn't quite as sacred as they thought it was. 10% change. And I don't know how legit these uh, these polling numbers really ultimately are, but I do think there's a reduction. Certainly there's a reduction in the sense that life is sacred. Uh, because, look, the governments, the corporations, uh, the churches didn't, and nobody really cared that these things were, uh, suddenly all these liberties were taken away. I guess maybe it's not that nobody cared, but uh, people had such a general response of, well, there's nothing we can do about it, you know? Two or three people on top decided to do this, and we're, then everything just kind of flowed along all the way down into the lowest echelons, uh, from the highest to the lowest. So, yeah, we have a uh, quite an amazing societal change. And I, I thought it was interesting also the idea that that people's viewpoints, their reanalysis comes in a crisis. And this is a pretty dark picture. Sorry about that. Okay, let's go to a second item here. Now, I know I talked about this in a previous week, 
but I still think it's pretty significant. So uh, women voting in the Catholic Synod. Well, a global group of religious sisters says that it is grateful to the Holy Father for his recent announcement that women will have a vote in the upcoming Synod on Synodality. The International Union of Superiors General says that it welcomed the decision with, quote, great joy and gratitude. I think that it was an answer, an answer that uh, as a, in a respond, no, after the long process that we are doing in the synodal path. Uh, Pope Francis uh, you know, shared with us uh, his wisdom, and um, this is the fruit of listening, the desire of inclusivity and participation that come out from a different uh, level and different area of our world and our society. So we are really grateful and open, open to, to live this experience and to bring passion and joy for religious life and for to be in the church, sign of commute and the prophecy for this time. I do agree that some of the things that the popes do is prophetic, uh, but not maybe quite the way that uh, sisters, whatever there says. So, all right, so this is May 8th from Malcolm Roberts, 2023. Children targeted by World Health Organization standards for sexuality education uh, in Europe. Just a couple of quick quotes here from this item. World, the World Health Organization has orchestrated a framework for policymakers, educational and health authorities, and specialists entitled Standards for Sexuality Education in Europe. The purpose is to standardize, in other words, to override the diverse teaching practices of each sovereign nation within Europe and the wider international community with regards to sexual education. The saturation of kindergartens in classrooms with LGBTQ plus and trans ideology has led to a rapid increase in children who are too young to be thinking about sexual relationships, identifying as part of these movements or becoming confused about their gender to the extent that they become severely distressed. In both Europe and the States, this has created a lucrative medical industry and the chemical and surgical interference of children's bodies, the results of which children will never recover from. Listen to this. This is from the United Nations World Health Organization report. This is, it says, it is essential to adopt their perspective, the children's perspective. The development of sexual behavior, feelings, and cognitions begins in the womb and continues throughout a person's lifetime. So yeah, little babies are having sexual thoughts. Really? Who told them that? How do they know that? What made them think that? How did they uh, did they read the baby's mind? Here's another statement from the United uh, the, the United Nations thing. Children have sexual feelings even in early infancy. Really? Who told them that? Okay, so here's some more about what they're going to teach. Within the Matrix, zero to four year olds will be taught about pregnancy and birth, the enjoyment of child masturbation gender identity, and diff different types of love. Four to six-year-olds will be encouraged to consolidate their gender identity and acceptable feelings of love and understand that, quote, all feelings are okay, but not all actions taken as a result of these feelings, unquote. And then it goes on. As the UN proudly declares, quote, teachers must equip children to have sexual relationships, unquote. Really? Teachers are supposed to equip children to have sexual relationships. Now, they're also saying this is all about uh, sexual health, and that's the label they're putting on it, sexual health. So, so anyway, you might say, well, I thought this was about moral news. I thought this was about churches and stuff. Well, the United Nations and the World Health Organization and all that, that's, they're having an impact on what is considered to be viable viewpoints on uh human sexuality and all this. So this is this is reflecting a, a from the top down UN that this is a change in moral perspective that is coming from this uh, secular agents. So this is meaningful. This is useful to look at and sad. So yeah, a lot of times you know by the nature of this this uh, my little weekly business here yeah this isn't necessarily going to be positive every week. The moral news usually we're talking about trouble uh, nonsense, mayhem, moral mayhem that's coming into the world. So here we kind of have uh, the UN. So like I said, you know, and, and yeah, I don't, I, I think the corporations are sold out. The governments are sold out. Um, everybody's kind of in tune with this line that's coming down. We as Christians, we need to 
um, have some backbone. We need to have some spine. There needs to be some uh, some some bone solidity back there in the spinal part of our bodies. And we need to be ready to resist these incursions, these moral incursions and attacks uh, as so much as we can uh, and by being independently moral. Uh, we need to be able to be stand for the truth that we know is God's truth in spite of the fact that all around us everybody's repainting, restating, re redesigning uh, the morality of the culture around us. And you know what? It's okay. In the end, the Lord's going to win. But there's going to be a lot of tragedy uh, to our loved ones and our neighbors and people in general all around on the way because of this moral destruction which continues to come. Well, so here's another week of the moral news. Uh, maybe we can find something more uplifting next week. But anyway, the Lord is coming. He's coming. And you can just uh, go to your Bible. Go to your knees and do some good things out there with other people. Make connections with your neighbors and help them to see that not everybody subscribes to this uh, moral nonsense that's coming down the way. 